Hello everyone, this hour on Verbling, the next in my great short story series, we're going to continue our short story series on Paul Bowles. Uh, two weeks ago we began reading short stories by Jane Bowles and then we started a story by Paul Bowles but we got a bit cut off. So we're going to pick up where we left off with a distant episode, one of his most famous short stories. First a little bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal to bring you this class. By the way, here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up, which means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so that I can so that we can keep the classroom nice and quiet. Also, tune in to the new words that we're using when you are speaking so that I can correct you and give you feedback. And finally, open up to your classmates. Relax and have fun. We're all here to learn and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. So we're going to get started in just a second. Let me see if I have... Oh, I do. Okay. Let me see if I have the... Let me see if I have the... Um, PDF to share with you. If you hang on just a second, I'm going to open this up. One second, and then we'll get started. Okay, so right now on your screen, you should see the graphic for the short story, A Distant Episode. Sylvia, can you see that on the screen? Yeah. Fantastic. So you are Sylvia from Pisa, right? Yes. I remember you. I remember your picture. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, Sylvia, in this class, we'll probably have others joining us soon. I don't know. Maybe people are still on holiday. It's been a little quiet. Um, so in this class, this is in a slightly more advanced class where we're reading texts that are really for native speakers. These are famous short stories in English literature. And we already began this short story. You weren't here for the class. So, if, if no one from the previous class shows up, then we can start from the beginning. If anyone was in the previous class, we need to go on to part two of the story. So that, that means we'll have to summarize it. But let's start, let's give them a minute or two to join, okay? Yeah. So, so first of all, Sylvia, what I want you to do is look at that picture and I want you to make, uh, I want you to make an educated guess about something about the story based on the graphic that you see. So take a look at the picture and tell me what comes to mind when you see that. Uh, see, there is some palms and a castle, I think. Mm -hmm. So there's palm trees. Oh, there is another guy. Right. It's palm trees, a kind of a castle. Hmm. Well, is it really a castle, though? Can you think of another word for that? If, if you don't use the word castle, can you think of another word? Because for me, a castle is very European, and that doesn't look like Europe to me. What do you think that is? Turkey? Turkish? It could be Turkey, sure, sure. So instead of castles, what, what word might you use for something? That you might, almost. <laughs> Maybe in Italian, but in English we would say fortress. Fortress. There you go. Fortress. Okay, very good. <clears throat> um, so, Yuki, tell her if she's right. Is that a fortress in Turkey? Uh, I haven't been to Turkey, so I don't know well, but I think uh, there, there are a lot of ruins, including fortress. It's true, but you read the story. You read the first part. So yeah. how close is Sylvia's guess? Is she right? 100%? 50%? Is it in uh, Turkey? I don't know. Maybe maybe this picture, maybe it is uh, Turkey, but I, I have an association from this picture with uh, African. Of course, because where does the story take place? You read part one, so where are we in the story? 
in the world? Where does the story take place? What's the setting? Do you remember? Yes, uh, I remember it. The story taking place in Morocco, no? Yeah, that's <laughs> yes. it. Yes. That's it. So, Sylvia, you were you were you were close with the with the word fortress, but not Turkey. In this case, it's yeah. Morocco. Morocco. Now that actual picture might not be Morocco. I don't know, but it definitely gives you the idea. I mean, I mean, it probably is Morocco, but it could also be Tunisia or someplace. But anyway, that part of the world. By the way, uh, we'll come back to the class. Thank you. <laughs> I have missed your class. Have everything with you. How how was your trip? It, it you was like trip to Italy. Yeah. Very very good. Very busy. So. <laughs> I got done teaching and then I had to take three trains, one plane, then another train, and then yeah. another train, and then I got back and I was awake for something like 30 hours. I was awake for 30 hours. You have, to, to, you have to travel the, all the route to by train? No, I took a plane too, but I, but. It, I had I had to get from Venice to almost Milan, so I had to take three trains to get there, oh, and then the plane went to the plane went to the north of Portugal because my boss bought the wrong ticket. <laughs> so I, I flew <laughs> the north of Portugal. I, I might as well have been flown to Spain because it's it's really far. So yeah, so I was awake for like thirty hours. I'm 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 more or less normal today, more or less, more or less. Let so me say you, a quick you did a detour, yeah? A big detour. Big. Very big. Okay. <laughs> let me say let me say a quick hello to Serena. Hello Serena, who's just joining us now. Where are you from, Serena? Hello everyone. I'm from Malaysia. From Malaysia. You are our first Malaysian. <laughs> I think you're the first. I don't think we have actually had anyone else. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. Have and, you been Never. Uh, Where you? Yeah, you know, I've heard like I think the the recent incident, which is the MH three three something, three seven zero. What is that? The two, two continuous uh, flight incident that happened recently have made Malaysia very popular, but in a bad bad way, not very good. Yeah, but be but before that, but before that, there was the flight from Brazil, that was also pretty bad. It happens. It happens. It's, it's nothing having to do with Malaysia. <laughs> it happens everywhere. But yes, no, I don't think that affects. I don't think that affects people visiting though. Do you? Um, nobody like most of the people now uh, that I know of they. They um, most people didn't want to. I mean, they don't want to take any Malaysian airlines. Right, right. Yeah. But that that was. You're talking about the one that was that was over the Ukraine, right? Over yeah, Ukraine. Th yeah, the Ukraine one, and also the 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 before the Ukraine also. Uh, three the all people on the plane died. The MH three eight zero, I guess is. Yeah, I don't know. That happened. I remember, but I don't remember exactly what happened. The one in, in the one in Ukraine, that wasn't. That yeah, the wasn't. one is uh, flying from, um, from where? I Means they they crashed down uh, to the sea. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. The, the Ukraine one before the Ukraine one, the the Malaysia airline also. The, uh, happened to crash down into the sea, and it's around Australia area, the Indian Ocean. Yeah. Right, right. Mm. <laughs> so so Malaysia is famous of now. Now it's famous because of the. So just yeah. just remind me to take a boat when I want to go to Malaysia. Okay. <laughs> All right. So look, mm. we're going to continue this short story, but first. Our super student Yuki is going to give us a little summary of the part that we yeah. already read. Just a little summary. 
Um, so because Almost you know, I forgot, I forgot, forgot that story. <laughs> it no was wrong, It seems like it, 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 it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. <laughs> well, we could either start from the beginning, or we could uh, just do a little summary. I think it would be better to do a little summary, and and then Serena and Sylvia, if you want to go back and read the beginning, uh, you can read it. But we're we're one third of the way through the story, so Yuki, let's do this. It's just just tell me more or less what you remember about the beginning. Ah, uh, you mean the latest story, yeah? This one, yeah, just an episode that we we have read. We started, uh, and then I had to. <laughs> I had to go, so we didn't we didn't get very far. But we read part one. What do you remember about the beginning of the story? Like, do you remember any of the characters? I can't remember. Uh, 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 story take story was taking place in in the uh, in the Morocco, uh, right. okay. in, in the desert city. Right. Good. Um, <laughs> Who is the and main character? Was the was the main character Moroccan or not? Main character is a foreigner, uh, Farther, be right? Visiting Morocco, right? He, and who was he wife. visiting? Who was he visiting? Do you remember? Uh, Uma? No. Uh, no. Uh, uh, previous story maybe. Uh, previous it, story. It's it a, it a man. Uh, I remember a man. Uh, she he visited to to this country to uh, to seek his uh, old friend. Yes, yeah? exactly. Yes. And, and and what 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 did his old friend do? So when he he was there before, he made friends with this guy. I I think his uh, friend is a professor, no, an investigator. No, 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 no. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. He's the professor. The guy who's visiting is the professor. Uh, but he, his he's, old friend is also investigate. Have the investigated? The no, 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 no. His old friend was the the cafe owner. He's trying, and he goes back to the cafe. Ah, yes, remember? Yes. Yeah. Remember, remember. Uh, yes. Me, uh, protagonist of this story uh, was talking with the uh, workers in the cafe. Right. Uh, he uh, he was uh, asked. He has uh, he has asked uh, about uh, his old friend. He's the uh, owner of the this cafe. Right. And yes. and so what was the surprise? Was his friend there to meet him? Uh, yes. I, I, what what was the surprise of, for him for protagonist of this story is that uh, he said that his old friend has been died. Right. Yeah. Did he die? I can't even remember. Did he die, or did he? Was he just not there? I don't remember. I think. I think we don't know if he died or not. I, I, I think I what we can't can't remember. Uh, but exactly, the point is, but I think he was told that his old friend has died. Could be. Yeah. It could be. We'll 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 read like the very end of the first part. So yes. Sylvia and Serena. That gives you just a quick overview of the part that we read. So, first of all, is that clear, Sylvia, Serena? More or less clear what happened so far? Yes. Sylvia, yeah? Not really. <laughs> okay, okay. So, just to just to summarize it, a man who is a professor, in fact, he's a, he's a researcher. Rather than say investigator, it's better to say researcher. He's a, he's a researcher of languages and dialects. But he seems like he might be a little bit confused or a little bit naive because after many, many, many years, he wants to go back to the cafe where he made a friend and he expects his friend to be there. He shows up. The cafe is different. His friend is not there. As Yuki said, the new, the new people at the cafe the new guy at the cafe uh, might even have said that that his friend died. I I don't think he did. I think he just said he doesn't know where he is. So nothing is exactly the way it seems, and you have to ask yourself, why would he expect after years and years this guy just to be there? Seems like he's a little naive. So we're going to pick up, going to move forward here in the story. 
we're going to pick up, let me just get to part two. Okay, just at the end, oh, okay. We're going to pick up just at the end of part one so that you jump right into the mood of the story. Okay, we're going to pick up the very end of part one. So I'll read this part really, really quickly. Ask if there's any questions, and then we'll go on. And each of us, is, we're going to keep taking paragraphs or pages. Okay, this is a pretty short story. So what I want you to do right now is open this PDF if you haven't opened it already. You can download it or you can open it. There is the link in the chat window. Okay, do you see it? Everyone see the link? Yes, I see. Sylvia, Serena, do you see the link? Okay. So. It might be because it's a little bit small on the screen. Yeah. Try to make okay. And right now we're on page five. I'm going to read this part really quickly, and then we're going to turn it over to you to keep reading. And as we go along, you can ask me questions, and I'll give you some. I'll ask you some questions to see if you're following this story. Yeah. There's going to be lots of vocabulary that you might not be familiar with. Okay. So let's look at the top of page five. They had come to the other side of town on the promontory above the desert. Through a great rift in the wall, the professor saw white endlessness broken in the foreground by dark spots of oasis. So he and the guy from the cafe are, 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 are leaving. The, the guy at the cafe is bringing him somewhere, but he doesn't really know where. They walked through the opening and followed a winding road between the rocks downward toward the nearest forest of palms. The professor thought, he may cut my throat, but his cafe, he would surely be found out. <laughs> the professor is not feeling very good about this new, this new friend that he's just made, obviously. Is it far, he asked casually. Are you tired, countered the kawaji. Kawaji is the word for shop, shopkeeper, more or less. They're expecting me back at the hotel Sah Saharian, he lied. You can't be there and here, said the Kawaji. The professor laughed. He wondered if it sounded uneasy to the other. Have you owned Romani's cafe long? I worked there for a friend. The reply made the professor more unhappy than he imagined it would. Oh, will you work tomorrow? Professor stumbled on a stone and fell scraped his hand. The Kawaji said, be careful. The sweet black odor of rotten meat hung in the air suddenly. Ugh, said the professor, choking. What is it? The Kawaji had covered his face with his burnus. That's the, like the veil or like the, the cloak that he's wearing. You know, they wear this kind of full body cape called a burnus. He covered his face with his burnus and did not answer. Soon the stench had been left behind. They were on flat ground. Ahead, the path was bordered on each side by, high, by a high mud wall. There was no breeze and the palms were quite still. But behind the walls, the sound of running water, also the odor of human excrement, yum, <laughs> was also almost constant as they walked between the walls. The professor waited as though it seemed logical for him to ask with a certain degree of annoyance. But where are we going? Soon, said the guide, pausing to gather some stones in the ditch. Pick up stone, pick up some stones, he advised. Here are bad dogs. Where? asked the professor, but he stooped and got three large ones in, with pointed edges. So, oh look, we've got someone else. We've got Shadow as well. Hello, welcome back, Shadow. Hello, John. Thank you. Are you still in the car, or now are you at home? <laughs> yeah, I'm in the car. You're in the car again? <laughs> yeah, every day. And this time, I'm in the car. Oh, okay, okay. So um, we're just we're just reading the first part of the story, and I'm going to turn it over to you to read. Let me just ask a quick question, Sylvia. How does the professor feel about his guide from the cafe? Does he feel good? Mm, I think yes. So and so. So so. Okay. Um, does he feel safe, Sylvia? 
based on what we read so far, does he feel safe? Yes. What do you think? Yes? Mm. Are you sure? No. <laughs> he doesn't feel safe. He doesn't feel safe. How do we know he doesn't feel safe? If you go back a little bit, we've got words like, look at this line in the middle of the page. The professor laughed. Can you read that line here in, uh, hold on, I'll put it in blue so you can see it. Read the sentence for me, Sylvia. This one in blue. The professor laughed. He wondered uh, if it sounds uneasy to the, other, to the other. Exactly. Uneasy. Is that a good feeling or a bad feeling? Bad feeling? It's a bad feeling. Do you know how to say it in Italian? Uneasy? Uh, there are two words. Non semplice. Uh -huh. Say again? This? Non semplice. Non semplice. Okay. Because I, I, I don't know the word in Italian, but I know in Portuguese what the word is. Yeah, it's <laughs> the opposite of easy. Easy is simple. This is not easy as in easy and difficult. This is easy as in feeling good. So it's a little bit different. Uh, okay. um, so so in Portuguese you say, um, I forgot the word now. <laughs> I forgot the word. Hold on a second. Even in Portuguese I can't remember. Let me tell you what I think it is in Italian. Hold on a second. Ah, uh, it's the same word. In inquieto. 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 Inquieto, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, it's a feeling that something is wrong. You feel in your gut that something is wrong. Okay. And, um, Serena, let me ask you a question, too. Is the place they're walking to, is it a pleasant place or is it an unpleasant place? What clue in the text tells you? Um, the, the place is a bit... Dirty, right? Because it says here there's mud, there's mud wall, mud a wall, right? And then there's running water. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and how does it smell? Does it smell good? Smell bad. I'm. Yeah. Here's I'm a good. Off. Exactly. Look at this. Read this part here, in in blue. Soon the stench had been left behind. What's a stench? Do you know that word, stench? Mm, no. Can someone oh, tell me? Something smelly. Yeah. Bad smell is a stench. Bad smell. Stench. For example, you might say, if there's a dead animal on the road, that has a stench. Stench is for something decaying. The smell of death is a stench. Mm -hmm. And we've got this wonderful line here, too. <laughs> Read this one. The order of human excrement was almost constant as they walked between the walls. Does that sound good? Order of human excrement. What yeah. is this? Excrement. What you do in the toilet. <laughs> oh, okay. It's pretty uh, bad. Suspicion. Exactly. It's a pretty bad smell. So they're walking through this terrible place. It's dark. It, there's a stench. There's a smell of feces everywhere. It sounds, it, and he thinks it's from people, not from animals. And suddenly the guy tells him to pick up rocks. He thinks that's pretty strange. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the story over to you. So if there's any, if there's any questions, just ask, okay? But now I'm going to turn the story over to you, and we're going to continue. So on the next page, um, Yuki, can you start us off in the first uh, two or three paragraphs? Okay. Part two, yeah? Yeah, part okay. two. They, they continued very quietly. The world came to the end, and the bright desert lay ahead. Nearby was a ruined marabout. Ma Marabout. Marabout, with mm -hmm. its tiny dome only half standing, and the front wall entirely destroyed. Behind it were clump of stones. Behind it were 
clumps. Clumps. Ah, cramps. Behind it were cramps of a stunt. Stunted? Stunted. Useless. Ah, useless palms. palms. Right, so it's you gotta say that as a group. Clumps of stunted useless palms. Because the palms is the main word. Uh, behind it were the cramps of the sta stunted useless palms. Good. A, a dog came running crazily toward them on, on three legs. Not until it got quite close did, did the professor hear it steady, low growl. The quon, the quon, <laughs> I think it's quo. I think it's quo quo or co wa co wa co wa ji co wa ji co wa ji. The co wa ji. The co wa ji let fly a large stone at it, striking it square in the muzzle. There was a strange snapping of the jaws, and the dog and the dog ran sideways in another direction falling blindly against the rocks and scrambling hap haphazardly about like an injured insect. Who threw the stone? Hmm? Who threw the stone? I think... Uh, who, who is the Kawaji? Remember what that means? Uh, Kawaji is a uh, worker in the cafe. Right, right. Actually, yeah. the owner of the cafe. Owner, no, yes, so, current, current owner. Right, oh. right. So, Kawaji means shopkeeper in the dialect. It means shopkeeper, basically. Okay. And by the way, let me just show you one quick thing. I want to show you this picture here. Uh, take a look at this. Can you see this, everyone? Yes. Yes. Do you know what that is? It's it looks like a castle. Yeah, but it's small. That is the marabout. Remember we were just reading this word that came to a marabout? Marabout. Yeah, in the story. It yeah. said um, it said nearby was a ruined marabout with its tiny dome half standing. That is a marabout. So you can see what it looks like. So that's what they came to in their walk. That's where they arrived. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Just to make sure that it's clear what we're reading. Give me a second. Let me get this text back on screen. Okay, you can keep going. Let's do let's do at least one more. Keep going. Turning off the road, they walked across the earth strewn. Strewn. Uh, they are strewn with sharp stones. Uh, past to the little ruin, through the trees, through the trees until they came to the them to a place where the ground dropped abruptly away in front of them. It looks like a quarry, uh, said the professor, deserting to French, French for the word quarry. Yeah, because, because he's trying to explain to the guy who speaks Arabic, but the, it's a colony, so they also speak French, because it was a French colony, so he's resorting to the word, the French word for quarry. Anyway. Resorting what? to French? Okay. Go ahead, yeah. Resorting to French for the word quarry, for the Arabic equivalent he could not call to mind at the moment. The, hmm? the, qu the, quon the quaji, quaji. Quaji. the quaji did not answer. Instead, he stood still and ta turned his head as if listening, listening, and indeed from some, somewhere down below, but very far below, came the faint sound of low fruit. The Koji nodded, nodded, nodded his head slowly, several lies said, The path begins here. You can see it well all the way. The rock is white and the moon is strong, so you can see well. I'm going back now and sleep. It, it's late. You can, leave, you can give me what you like. Okay, so this is a good place to take a moment and see what's going on. 
By the way, a quick hello to Elena, who's just joining us. Elena, we're reading a short story by Paul Bowles called The Distant Episode. It's one of his most famous stories. Okay? Hello, Elena? Okay. Hello? Okay. okay. Hi. Okay, very good. So, you'll figure it out as we go along. But basically, the story takes place in Morocco. An American or Western, probably American professor, is going to a, a distant exotic place in Morocco in the 1940s or 30s. And nothing is the way he remembers it. And so we pick up at this strange moment that Yuki just read, where he's being led... He goes to visit his friend, who is no longer living there, maybe isn't even alive, at this cafe. And the cafe owner leads him down a strange path. And that's where we picked up the story. What do you think about this last line, Yuki, where the Koaji says, the path begins here? So, first of all, what, what's, what's going on here? The, what, where does the Koaji bring him? What do you think he's bringing him? Uh, he bring him the uh, 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 stone, no? No, no, no. Eh? Well, this line here about the path, the path begins here. You can see it well all the way. The, the, the rock is white and the moon is strong. So you can see well. I'm going back and sleep now. It is late. You can give me what you like. So where does he bring him and what does he want him to give? What, what's your guess? Make a guess. Ooh, Elena, we are hearing car, so I need to <laughs> just uh, keep your microphone off until you're ready to speak because we're hearing the traffic. So Yuki, what do you think? Make an educated guess. You don't have to be right, but what do you think based on what we read so far? Where is he bringing him? And what do you think the Kwaji means by you can give me what you like? Uh, they passed uh, around the quarry, yeah? Yeah, a quarry, the place where you, where you dig for rocks or yes. marble. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, what, what do you think about that line, you can give me what uh, you I like? I think uh, he... 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 He bring the uh, stone, rock, no? Rock, yeah, the stones. Uh huh. But what do you think the Kwaji means when he says, you can give me what you like? Do you have a guess? Maybe it's not clear. It's not clear, sorry. Okay, no problem. Class, rest of you, class. What's your guess about that line? You can give me what you like. What do you think the Kwaji wants from him? based on what we read so far. Serena, Sylvia, what do you think? Want to make an educated guess? Serena, Sylvia, are you there? Um, yes. So what he wants is to leave the place, so he say, you can give me whatever you want, I'm going back. So I'm trying to escape from the, from the place. And then the person Maybe give him something, something well, what? that will like that like, will also, hmm? like what? What do you think he wants from him? Oh. <laughs> what uh, you... uh, some natural resources. At uh, I don't quarry. agree. I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good guess, but I don't agree. It's a good guess. Here's my theory. Something that can that can hurt hurt the person. I think I think the Kawaji, the shopkeeper, wants money. That's what I think. So when he says you can give me what you like, I think he means you have to pay me because the Kawaji led him to a path because he's looking for stuff. He came back to this area and the Kawaji is leading him to the next place on the path. Oh. And he's and he and so the Kawaji decided Oh, well, now you can pay me because I brought you here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think also, that's... It's, not, it's not the Koraji who wants to leave. It's the person who got him to the place he wants to leave. The, the Koraji is acting like a, like a tour guide suddenly. Mm -hmm. And the professor, we don't know his name, but the professor guy, the professor is being led uh, uh. 
out of the little city onto the path wherever he's supposed to go. So I think the Kawaji just played a little trick, a little trick. He's like, oh, I'll bring you here. By the way, yeah. there's, wild, there's wild dogs. Look, I protected you. So you can give me what you like. In other words, now you owe me money, <laughs> I think. I read this story a long, long, long time ago, so I don't even remember, but I think that's what it is. Yeah. Is that clear? Yeah, it's clear now. Yeah. Sylvia, are you following the story so far? Any yeah, questions? Yeah. No. All right. Okay, so Sylvia, I want you to keep reading starting with this paragraph in blue. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. So you pick it up from there. Uh, standing there at the edge of the abyss, which at each moment looked deeper, with the dark face of the Kwaji framed in its monolith bones close to his own face, the professor asked himself exactly what he felt. Indignation, curiosity, fear, perhaps, but most of all, relief and the hope that this was not a tricky. The hope that the Kwaji could really leave him alone and threw back without him. By the way, the burnus, remember that word? That is the clothing that they wear, like this big cape okay. that they wear in the desert. Keep going. Uh, is him? He stopped back a little from the edge and fumbled in his pocket for a loose note. Wait, 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 where are you? Sorry, I think we're on the next page. Oh, you're right, no. sorry. No, you're right, you're right. My fault. Go ahead, sorry. Continue, he sorry. He stood back a little from the edge and fumbled in his pocket for a loose note because he did not want to show his wallet. Fortunately, there was a 50 franc bill there, which he took out and handed to the man. He knew the Kwaji was pleased, and so he paid no attention when he heard him saying, It's not enough. I have to walk a long way home, and there are dogs. Good. I want you to repeat two words. The first word is the edge. The edge. The edge. What is okay? The edge. Right. The edge. The edge. Okay. Good. Because I was hearing a hedge with an H, and hedge is a kind of a bush, <laughs> but edge is the border. And also this word, fumbled. Fumbled. Could you replace fumbled with a simpler word? Could you substitute fumbled for another word in the sentence? He stepped back a little from the edge and did what in his pocket? Fumbled. Can you think of a substitute word that's more no, simple? I don't know the meaning. <laughs> ah, okay, look. He stepped back from the edge and he searched his pocket in a clumsy way. Searched his pocket for a loose note. Fumbled is to search or grab in a clumsy way, to fumble, fumble. Is that clear? Yeah, like yeah. research. Like, like, think about, um, think about a, a sports event, like American football. If you throw the football and the guy doesn't catch it, he fumbles the ball and it, gr and it falls on the ground. He's trying to catch mm -hmm. it, but he's clumsy, so he fumbles the ball. Okay. So fumbles is like trying to grab or in a clumsy way. So keep going, Sylvia, on the next page. Eight. Mm, thank you and good, good night, said the professor, sitting down with his legs down, up under him, and lighting a cigarette. He felt almost happy. Give me only one cigarette, please, the man. Of course, he really said. Pleaded the man. Pleaded the man. Of course, he said, a bit Courtly, and he held up the pack. The Kwaji squatted close be beside him. His face was not ple uh, okay. He's pleasant. pleasant to see. What is this? Uh, what is this? So the professor, terrified again, as he held out his lighted cigarette toward him. The man's eyes were almost closed. Wait, wait. It was the wait, wait. The man's. The man's what? Eyes. 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 Right. Were almost closed. It was the most obvious registering of concentrated scamming the professor had ever seen. When the second cigarette was burning, he uh, ventured to say to the still squatting Arab, 
what are you thinking about? Okay, Sylvia, what do you think the Arab, he calls him an Arab, he's not an Arab, he's a Moroccan, but <laughs> what do you think he's thinking about? In your opinion, based on what we read, what do you think he's thinking about? Does they smoke all the time? <laughs> he's thinking about the cigarettes, or is he thinking about the professor? Cigarette? Really? I think he's because thinking about the professor because he's got that look of scheming on his face. So what does it mean to scheme? What does it mean to scheme? Uh, I don't know in English. Scrutare, scruting? Well... Looking with uh, attention? Yeah, okay, I agree with you. That could be part of it. How you, when you look like you're scheming, it looks like you're focused and concentrated. And what's going on in your head when you're scheming? Are you thinking nice, happy thoughts? No. No. What are you thinking about? Is, uh, something wrong. Something wrong. Maybe you're thinking of doing something bad if you're scheming, right? Something that you're trying to get away with. It's trying to get away with something that the other person maybe doesn't want. So if you're in if you're on the train or you're on the sub the metro and you see someone looking at you scheming, they're probably figuring out how to take your wallet with that look of scheming. Clear? So is that clear, by the way, Sylvia? Yeah. Okay, great. So if this Kawaji is scheming, let me ask you, in your opinion, what might he be scheming about? The guy gave him money the guy gave him a cigarette. What is it that he wants? We don't know, by the way. This is just your opinion. But what do you think he wants? More money? Maybe more money. <laughs> Maybe. Let's find out. So, Serena, you're going to pick it up from this paragraph in blue. Do you see this? Let's find out what he's thinking about. The other drew on his cigarettes deliberately and seemed about to speak. Then his expression changed to one of satisfaction, but he did not speak. A cold wind had risen in the air and the professor shivered. The wait one second. Wait, wait one second. A cool wind, repeat, a cool wind had, had re risen. Risen. That's it. Huh. Risen in the air and the professor shivered. The sound of the flute came out from the depth below at intervals, sometimes mingled with the scrapping of nearby palm fronds, one against the other. These people are not primitive, the professor found himself saying in his mind. Why do you think the professor says that to himself? He doesn't say it out loud, he's thinking it. These people are not primitives. What's the professor trying to do? What's he thinking? Is he afraid of something, Serena? Primitive means what? Primitives Prim means like, you know, people without civilization, cavemen, oh. right? And uh, he's, he's saying these people are not primitives. So why do you think he's saying that? Is he trying to... He's afraid he, that the people will hurt him. Exactly. He's afraid he's going to get hurt. So he's trying to convince himself that that's not going to happen. These people are not primitives. What am I thinking? The guy just wants a cigarette, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good, say the Kwaji, rising slowly. Keep your money. 50 francs is enough. It's an honor. Then he went back into French. Da -da -da -da. Don't know. Right. <laughs> Chuckle. Or was the professor hysterical and strode away quickly? By the way, does anyone speak French? No. Not no? French. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I know it says always right. Tu dois. So always right. So stay to the right. So I think it's you have to go down and keep to the right if I if in my bad French. But I could be wrong. Because <laughs> it's not, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, okay, keep going, Samarana. Next paragraph. The professor was in a state of nerves, nervous. 
Nerves. Nerves. Yeah. Nerves. Okay. He lit another cigarette and found his lips moving automatically. They were saying, is this a situation or a predicament? This is ridiculous. He sat very still for several minutes, waiting for a sense of reality to come to him. He stretched out on the hard, cold ground and looked up at the moon. It was almost like looking straight at the sun. If he shifted his gaze a little at a time, he could make a string of weaker moons across the sky. Incredible, he whispered. Then he sat up quickly and looked about. There was no guarantee that the Kwaji really had gone back to the t to town. He got to his feet and looked over the edge of the precipice. 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 In the moonlight, the bottom seemed miles away. Okay, where? Mm. And there was nothing to give. It's skill, not a tree, not a house, not a person. He listened for for the flute and heard only the wind going by his ears. A sudden violent desire to run back to the road seized him. Wait, wait, wait! Seized him. Seized. Yeah. That yeah. means to, to grab hard. To seize is to grab hard. And he turned and looked in the direction and. The Kuaji had taken. At the same time, he felt softly of his wallet in his breast pocket. Then he sped over the edge of the cliff. Then he made water over it and listened intently like a child. This gave him the impetus. 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 That means like the energy to start. Like the the energy or the momentum to start something, the impetus. Impetus to start down the path into the abyss. Abs into the abs wait 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 abyss. Abyss. That's it. Abyss. Abyss is like darkness. You can see nothing but darkness. It's an abyss. Mm, abyss. Curiously enough, he was not dizzy, but prudently he kept from. Peering to his right over the edge, it was a steady and steep downward climb. The monotony of it put him into a frame of mind not unlike, uh, not unlike that which had been induced by the bus ride. He was murmuring Hassan Hamini again, repeatedly and in rhythm. He stopped. Furious with himself for the sinister overtone the name now suggested to him, he decided he was exhausted from the trip and the walk. He added, "Right. So, where is he, and where is he going after the Kawachi leaves, Serena? Is that clear where he is and where he's going? Like phys physically, physically into the into the darkness." Yeah, yeah, but that's true. And where is the darkness? Because he starts in one place and he starts to go to another place. So where does he start off? I don't. You have you have to picture this in your mind. Is uh, it clear where he starts? I, I, uh, so like the, the, the key. The, the key cliff? word is. Say again. The cliff. Exactly. He's on top of a cliff. That's the precipice, the cliff. So the Kawaji led him out of the cafe, through this back alley, into the desert, and he's on a cliff, and he hears the music of a flute. So wherever he's going, he can kind of hear where it is. And he has to go down this cliff, but it's dark. But the moon is bright. So as he goes down the cliff, he decides not to look around because he's going to get scared and feel like he's going to fall. So just like the bus ride, he gets into this trance-like state and he realizes or he starts to say to himself, ah, no one was going to kill me. I'm just tired from the, from the bus ride and the walk. I'm just exhausted. My mind is playing tricks on me. Right? So he starts to rationalize the crazy thoughts from before. So that's basically where we are. Right. 
Before he came to the place. I'm sorry, say again. I couldn't hear you. Uh, did he have a bus ride? Yeah, 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 he had a bus ride. So he, he, he came to Morocco on a boat, I guess, because um, oh. this is a long time ago. Then he had a long bus ride to the town where he's going to study the languages because he's a linguistics professor. So he had a long bus ride that took forever, and he was really happy because the sky was dark red. It looked like it didn't look like back home, and he was kind of you know in this good mood being in this exotic place on the bus ride in the very beginning. Long bus ride. That's true. Okay, how are we doing, everyone? Everything more or less clear so far? Any questions? Are we cool? Cool. Are we cool? Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, Elena, Elena, we have time to do one more passage before we run out of time. So, I'd like you to pick up on this paragraph here. Can you see that, Elena? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So, go for it. He was now well down the gigantic cliff, but the moon... Gigantic. 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 Good. Gigantic cliff, but the moon being directly overhead gave, uh, gave us much light as ever. Only as the one ever. as ever. Only Good. the one was wind, left, wind. Only the wind was left behind above to wander among the trees, to blow through the dusty streets of En Dadorti into the hall of the Grand Hotel Saharian and under the doors of his little room. So he's left, uh, he's left his hotel behind him to go out into the desert, in other words. Because remember he was saying, oh, I'm expected back at the hotel. And the Kawaji said, well, you can't be there and here, meaning like, don't lie to me. <laughs> so he hears the wind and, it, and he's thinking back where the wind is going. The wind is going back to his hotel where he left his room. Okay? okay. Clear? <laughs> yeah, okay. If there's any questions, just ask. Okay? So okay. keep going. Keep going, Elena. Next paragraph. It occurred to him that he ought to ask himself why he was doing this irrational thing. But he was intelligent enough to know that since he was doing it, it was not so important to prove for explanation as the moment. At suddenly, that moment. At that moment. Suddenly, the earth was flat beneath his feet. He had reached the bottom sooner than he expected. He stepped, stepped, stepped. ahead stepped ahead distractfully still as if he expected another three treacherous 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 drop it was so hard to know in this uniform a uh, dim brightness before he knew what had happened what had happened the dog was upon him a heavy mass of fur trying to push him backwards, a sharp nail rubbing down his chest, a straining of muscles against him to get the teeth into his neck. The professor thought, I refuse to die this way. The dog fell back. It looked like an Eskimo dog. As it sprang again, he called out very loud, I it fell against him. There was a confusion of sensations and a pain somewhere. There was also the sound of, voice, of voices very near to him, and uh, he could not understand what they were saying. Something called a metallic was pushed brutally against brutally. his brutally. Brutal, brutally against his spine as the dog still hung for a second by his teeth from a mass of clothing and perhaps flesh. The professor knew it was a gun, and he raised his hands, shooting in Mogrebi. Shouting. shouting, shouting in Mogrebi. Take away the dog, but the gun merely pushed him forward, and since the dog wants it, what 
was back on the ground, did not leave again. He took a step ahead. The gun kept pushing. He kept talking steps. Again, he heard voices, but the person directly behind him said nothing. People seemed to be running about. It sounded that way, at least. For his eyes, he discovered when a steel shoot tight against the dog attack. Wait, wait, wait. We're still shut tight. Repeat. We're still shut tight. We're still shut tight. 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 <laughs> so tight. 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 There you go. Keep going. Tight. Uh, he opened. One second. There you go. I go can't. Ahead. Okay. He. He opened them. Yes, he opened them. He opened them. A, a group of men was advancing toward him. They were dressed in the black clothes of the Regibat. The Regiba is a cloud across the face of the sun. When the Regiba appears, the right to the righteous righteous. man righteous man turns away. In how many shops and market a marketplace, he had heard these maxims uttered ban banterling, uh, banteringly, banteringly, banteringly among friends. Let, let me Never stop you there for just a second. Uh, we're going to run out of time, so just to finish this section, I'm just going to read the last sentence and do a quick recap because we're going to run out of time. I have to start the class. So just to okay, finish, okay. just to finish. Never to regu reguba, to be sure, but for these, for these men do not frequent towns. They send a representative in disguise to arrange with shady elements there for the disposal of captured goods. An opportunity, he thought quickly, of testing the accuracy of such statements. <laughs> so the guy's a moron. He's about to be shot, and he's like trying to think of opportunities. He did not doubt for a moment that the adventure would prove to be a kind of warning against such foolishness on his part, a warning which in retrospect would be sinister, half-farcical. Well, we have to stop. We're going to continue the story on Thursday at the same time. Okay? If you have questions or comments, we have to stop now, but you can send them to me through the Verbling message, message system. If you have any questions or comments, we're going to continue with the rest of part two and finish the story, part three, on Thursday at 10 GMT. It was great having you all. I'll be back in 30 seconds for the next class, which is our business class, talking about service. Okay? Send me your questions and comments, and I'll see you Thursday. Bye for now, everyone. Or Bye come back now. in a minute for the next class. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. See you. Bye. Thank you.